Hello and welcome to 10 Minute Tabletop. I'm Devin and here are the biggest stories from tabletop gaming from the past week in 10 minutes or less so you can get back to playing the game. Morkborg is getting its own video game. This is great after last week's story about Pirate Borg being king of the Borgs after raising over $500,000 on Kickstarter. The video game adaptation of Morkborg is set to launch next year. It's called Morkborg Heresy Supreme, and it promises to bring the metal art style and random dice rolls of the tabletop game to your screen. Players can choose the different classes and make uses of light RPG mechanics in a side-scrolling action gameplay. A Kickstarter for the game is coming October 1st. Why is this important? We're seeing another tabletop role-playing game bridge the gap from tabletop game to video game. Of course, we've seen this a ton with Dungeons and Dragons, and of course, Pathfinder. Pathfinder has like four games in the pipeline. But a smaller game like Morkborg getting its own video game is huge. And of course, you have games like Call of Cthulhu and Vampire the Masquerade, which have tabletop games and also video games. But if we see more indie games like Morkborg begin to get video games, I do see that as a great path forward to expanding not only the IP to get more people into the game, but also a healthier industry altogether for publishers. Because video gaming can become another strategic avenue for this IP. <music> Dungeons and Dragons 2024 Player's Handbook is the best-selling book of all time for Dungeons and Dragons. Wizards of the Coast announced that the 2024 Player's Handbook is the fastest-selling Dungeons and Dragons book ever. It sold three times as many copies as the 2014 version and was the biggest print run in all of D&D history reported by Ian World. Wizards of the Coast also touted that D&D has 85 million fans worldwide and over 18 million D&D Beyond users. Why is this important? This is huge. A year ago, Wizards of the Coast was dealing with the OGL crisis, and now they are hitting records with their new book. And of course, D&D Beyond has grown substantially. This is definitely boding well for the rest of the 2024 release. In other Dungeons and Dragons news, uh, Wizards of the Coast is seeking a new brand manager. Now that Greg Tito has officially left his career with Wizards of the Coast behind, the company is looking for a new senior brand publicity manager. The job listing is up on the Hasbro website and asks for at least a bachelor's degree in communication, PR, journalism, or other such related field. It also asks for eight plus years experience with public relations. The employee would be expected to lead day-to-day -day publicity efforts, plan events, head fan relations, and of course, be in charge of social media. Anyone who knew Greg Tito or followed Wizards of the Coast closely enough knew that he was kind of the voice of Dungeons and Dragons. He was a fantastic brand manager. He led a lot of initiatives that people that were close to the brand, creators and fans knew. Everything from Dragon Talk, which of course got its own book, to the Stream of Many Eyes, or to D&D Live. Whoever ends up filling this will have a lot of eyes on them. And right now there is a lot of divisiveness around Wizards of the Coast. A lot of folks want to support the wonderful designers and team there, but they disagree with Hasbro's direction of the game and the brand. So whoever comes in has got to walk a pretty fine line. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to Total Party Chill. I'm Justin McElroy, the oldest McElroy brother. I'm here with Travis and Griffin and, and our dad, Clint. We just want to encourage you to check out Start Playing over at startplaying.com. Travis, why would I ever do that, though? Well, you're doing that, Justin, because you want to play in some role-playing Dungeon and Dragon sort of, you know, games, things like that, some TTRPGs, but you don't have anybody to play with you, or you don't have anyone to run the game, or you don't have anyone to play in the game you're running. All these things can be solved at startplaying.com. Dad, is Travis lying? No, he is not lying. Travis? My Travis? No. My Travis is as honest as the day is long because these guys no, that's not do. True. Well, okay, maybe not as long. Maybe 12 hours. Start Playing does a great job of matching you up with just the right game, just the right game master, just the right fellow players. It's a great opportunity for you. So go to startplaying.com, get matched up to the right game and the right GM for you, and make your own venture zone. The 80s Dungeons & Dragons cartoon characters star in the first 2024 D&D adventure. D&D Beyond released a free adventure that uses the 2024 rules. Uni and the Hunt for the Lost Horn sees the titular unicorn from the 1980s Dungeons & Dragons cartoon in trouble. It's up to the players to save Uni's horn by taking on the role of the 80s cartoon kids, now grown up and sporting level 4 character sheets. The free one-shot is notable for being the first official 2024 rules adventure, showing some of the first 2024 monster stats and previewing official magic items based on the 80s kids gear. 
Why is this important? We are seeing a lot of content around the 80s cartoon character, which makes me feel that they are prime for a reboot or a new TV series or cartoon around them. It's my guess that we're going to see something happen in the next year, something announced around the D&D cartoon characters from the 80s. There's been a recent push of them in the comics. We see them all over the player's handbook, and we see Venger on the Dungeon Master's Guide. Or maybe it was the Monster Manual. I forget. I definitely think there is something in store with the 80s cartoon characters that Wizard of the Coast hasn't let on yet. Titmouse Animation Studios is releasing their own tabletop RPG. Titmouse, the studio that made Legend of Vox Machina, is crowdfunding a party tabletop RPG. It will be named Drunkards, Druggies, and Delinquents, and it is meant to serve as a wild satire of D&D antics. Players will take on chaotic quests that recommend them to get more inebriated as the game goes, and the game will hit Backer Kit on October 8th. I love the idea of how this is pitched. This is why I think it's important. It is tabletop role-playing party game. A tabletop game that involves role-playing, but it is specifically a party game, which means it doesn't take a lot of rules. It probably won't rely on a lot of dice. But when I think of party games, I think of things that are easy to pick up and you can put down just as quickly. Last week, we talked about Discworld, which is going to be a diceless game that uses a pun-based narrative system. So seeing these games that are pushing the envelope of tabletop role-playing games are also going to make them more accessible. I'm really excited to see what Titmouse brings to the table. And our last story, Magic the Gathering's animated series is back in development. It was shelved for a little bit. The Russo brothers are no longer directing. We have a new director, but it looks like it's moving ahead. Details are sparse, but we do know that Chandra Anaji will be involved as characters in the animated series. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. That's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed this. If you want to support the show, head over to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash total party chill or share this with your friends, your family, or your enemies. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that goodness. It helps the show a ton. Also, we have a ton of goodies at the studio that we need to start doing giveaways for. So comment below your favorite part about today's stories and we'll go ahead and draw someone at random. And we'll send you a total party chill booster box of minis. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. <laughs>